The answer to your first question, no. They don't make the news. And I know that for sure. It's a question I get asked a lot. Let me put it this way. Try to think about the last suicide that you know of. Last year, a few months ago, Well, you should know that more than one person in Hawaii, only in Hawaii, more than one person will commit suicide every other day. That should be proof enough for you to understand that yes, Hawaii, is a, Hawaii does have a problem with suicide. And no, you won't read about it. That means that someone's killed themselves in Hawaii since you woke up on Thanksgiving morning. And I think it's safe to say based on my experience that 95 to 99% of them never make the news. And there's good reasons for that. But I think even those good reasons can hurt Hawaii. One of the reasons is that Hawaii wants to avoid copycat suicide. They don't want others to get the ideas. People that were on the edge that were thinking about it and then they see someone else with a successful suicide that makes the news. The other reason is it's bad for tourism. That, that one sounds cold. But another factor, another factor that I say is very useful and justifiable is that all suicides are classified by us in law enforcement as unattended deaths. And what that means is that a doctor is not willing to sign off on the death certificate for cause of death. So an attended death would be something like you've been struggling with stage four cancer and the doctor's been treating you and you went through chemotherapy or, or you told the doctor you didn't want treatment. Well, when you die at home, the police officers will call the doctor, the medical examiner will call the doctor, and the doctor will say, hey, I've been treating this person for cancer, she died of cancer, or he died of cancer, or heart disease, or diabetes. And because of the sensitivity of the investigation, because it's unattended, meaning it still has to be investigated, you won't hear the details in the news. And that's probably 99.5% of all the suicides. And then the reason for those investigations, because most suicides have to be investigated because they could have been murders. It's not hard to stage a suicide. So those have to be investigated. And I think that because of those circumstances, you won't hear about most suicides. And so although I think those are reasons that people have for not making the news or for the police not to release them or for the Hawaii Tourism Authority not to make it a big deal, that hurts Hawaii because we don't talk about it. We don't see the wave, the swell of suicides. And then add to that the problems of island life. I know the difference. I know what it's like on the mainland. On the mainland, you can disappear. 
you can do something wrong, no one will hear about it. You can just make some distance and put it on ice. But in Hawaii, if you make the news, think about it. Everywhere you go, Doug Karenik does a YouTube video on you getting arrested. KITV does a piece. Civil Beat writes a paper. It's hard to come back from on an island. So even though Hawaii to me is a greater place, a happier place, with better quality of life, if you're not in that quality of life category, then the struggles that you face by the mistakes that you make have harder consequences. Locally, suicide is the most common cause of fatal injury among Hawaii residents. I'm gonna read that again. Locally, suicide is the most common fatal most common cause of fatal injuries among Hawaii residents. 25% of all fatal injuries of Hawaii residents are suicide. That outpaces car crashes, homicide, unintentional poisoning, and drowning. Suicide. One of every four fatal injuries is a suicide. And then think about the survivors of suicide. I don't mean the families. That's its own number. But think about the actual survivors of suicide, the people who are unsuccessful, the suicide attempts. Those go up every year. For every person who commits suicide in Hawaii, 30, 30 people attempt it. Let that number sink in. If someone commits suicide every other day in Hawaii, that means 15 people a day attempt suicide. And typically it's 65% of everyone who commits or attempts suicide in Hawaii do it on Oahu. Actually, per capita, it's higher in the other islands because there's less people. Because Honolulu has more than 60% of the people in Hawaii. But only 60% of the suicide. Suicide was the second leading cause of death for people ages 10 to 34 last year. Second leading cause of death. The fourth leading cause of death from 35 to 44, that's my age bracket. Fifth for ages 45 to 54 and the eighth cause of death for ages 55 to 64. Seventeenth for those 65 and older. This I found interesting. Oddly enough, the preliminary data shows that there were 124 suicides from April through December of 2020. We're talking about the pandemic. That's 26 less in that same nine month period than the previous nine months, than that same previous period the year before. There were 150 suicides between April and December, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. We're talking 150. We had 26 less during the same nine month period during the pandemic.
there was 138 suicides in those months from 2010 to 2014. So 2010 to 2014, we have 138 on average. From 2015 to 2019, it's 150. It goes all the way down to 124 in 2020. I would have thought it would have went up. And there's a lot of reasons for why it may have gone down. There's a lot of variables that are hard to quantify. But it may be that the people who are in the lowest of the low of the socioeconomic levels in Hawaii, they were receiving support from the government. So the lowest of the low. And typically it is the lowest that will commit the suicides in that bracket. So it could have been that. It also could have been the fact that everyone was suffering together. You know what I mean? Everybody, it's not like you had people who were depressed at home, hating themselves, jealous of everyone, watching everyone else, else live their life outside. During the pandemic, everybody was at home. And believe it or not, there were some people who are used to being around people because they go to work or they go to school to be around people and then they go home and they're lonely. But then there's others who everyone leaves the house and leaves them alone, lonely. So during the pandemic, everybody was at home. So there's a lot of variables there that I can't really put my finger on, but I was shocked that the 2020 April to December had lower suicide rates than the previous entire decade. And these rates were going up every single year. And then it went back to 10 years prior, at least 10 years prior. I don't have the data from 2010, from before 2010. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention ranked Hawaii 41st in the nation for suicide rates in 2020. That means only nine states were ahead of us. An average of 190 Hawaii residents per year kill themselves. Wow. So that's more than one every other day. Suicide was also the fifth leading cause of death among non-residents in Hawaii from 2014 to 2018 according to the DOH. Some travelers, they come to Hawaii with the, preliminary, with the primary purpose of committing suicide away from the families and friends. We call it suicide tourism. There's articles been written about it. Anybody who's spent enough time in Hawaii knows, especially those who work in Waikiki. People don't wanna be home when they do it. They don't want their family and friends to find them or to see them that way. And surprisingly, a lot of people jump from hotels in Waikiki. It seems like a scary way to go. It seems like there's a lot of other ways. But there are a lot of jumpers. From 2010 to 2015, at least 43 visitors committed suicide in Hawaii. So 43 in five years. That's basically nine a year. Nine a year, it's almost one a month. 12, resident, 12 non-resident deaths were deemed undetermined. This means that they could not tell if it was suicide or if it was an accident. But usually you can tell if it's an accident. And usually you can tell if it was a suicide. So the fact that you couldn't tell that it was an accident and couldn't tell that it was a suicide is suspicious in its own right. So if you add those 12 to the 43 suicides that were recorded that we could prove, we're talking 55 suicides. That's more than 10 a year. That's almost one a month. The earliest visitor suicide I could find in Waikiki was in the late 1800s. 
I did some research, looked through all the newspapers, and I found some in the late 1800s. A Hawaiian man jumped from a train car and killed himself. Um, there's a lot of people that jumped from boats. A lot of knives. A lot of people kill themselves with knives. In 1950 was the first jumper I could find. I'm sure there were some before then, but 1950 was the first news article I could find when we had a jumper in Waikiki. Could be because of the height of the buildings. Uh, but 1950 was the first one that I can find. I know that I remember weekends in Waikiki when I worked in Waikiki in Fourth Watch and in field training in FTEP. There were weekends where multiple people jumped. I mean, that, that was when I was a policeman. So we're talking 2011 to 2018. I remember there were multiple people jumping in a weekend. And in the 80s, there were weekend, there were days where multiple people jumped in the same day. And the, it wasn't a wave yet. So they weren't, they weren't trying to hush it. It wasn't a scourge. So they weren't being as proactive about not talking about it. So it would make the news. And then a lot of times, if you do hear them on the news, it's because a lot of people saw it. A lot of people are talking about it. Especially with social media now. You're going to hear about jumpers. You're going to see it on Reddit, on Instagram. If you're in my Patreon, shout out to all my awesome patrons, by the way, and thank you guys for your gifts. I appreciate you. Le, coming in hot with the gifts before the live even started. You are a sweetheart, and I appreciate you. Um, that's awesome. It really is. But if you're a part of my Patreon, you would know. Oh, and Hoppo Boy, thank you. Thank you for the super thanks. Appreciate you, Hoppo Boy. If you are in my Patreon, We've talked about this before. We did an entire episode. But on Thursday, August 18th, 1988, at 10.40 p.m., Mariko Comilla, presumably out of shame of forgetting to book a flight, a return flight for one of her family members, she left the room that they were in, went back to her seventh floor hotel room at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, the Diamond Head Tower, and she woke up her three sons. Listen to this, guys. She woke up her three sons who were sleeping already. 10.40 p.m. There was a four-year-old Satoshi, a 10-year-old Hirouki, and a 16-year-old Naomichi. He had, I believe, autism. Um, lured the sleepy boys out onto her lanai, strapped her four-year-old Satoshi to her back with a pair of pants, tied it around her back. She tried to throw Naomichi over the lanai. He was 16, remember, he, he had like severe autism. He tried, they, she tried to throw him off the lanai, but he grabbed on and he fought back and he ran back into the hotel room. So he was strong enough to break free. But then he runs in the room, she's out there with the baby strapped to her back and her 10-year-old still on the lanai with her. She threw the 10-year-old over the balcony but he grabs on to the railing, which is like three and a half inches, it's like that. Grabs onto the railing and held as tight as he could and didn't fall. But his mother Mariko, with his baby brother, his four-year-old on her back, jumped over the railing. She died immediately. They fell 70 feet to the ground. She died, he lived until the next day. That was a Japanese tourist. And we talked about that, we broke that down. There is a phenomenon, a cultural phenomenon in Japan, and it's called Oyako Shinju, and it's basically an honor suicide, where you take your children with you so that they don't have to live, and they don't have to live with the shame of having a parent who committed suicide, or being widowed. So they take their parents with them. There was a very, very 
publicized event that happened in San Francisco by the pier where the, the mom took her kids, her two kids out there and drowned them. Um, and that shocked everybody in America, but she was not found guilty of murder because of the Oyako Shinju. That she didn't do it to hurt them or to out of malice for them, but out of mercy, which is crazy. Um, but they had mercy on her and they didn't get her on murder. I believe it was manslaughter. College students do it too in Hawaii. On March 4th, 2010, a 21-year-old student jumped from the 10th floor of the Hale Wainani One residence apartment building at UH. Authorities believed he was a student, but he wasn't a resident student. He came to the campus just to jump from the stairwell. And it was like the 12th floor. So we have locals. It is the number one leading cause of fatal injury amongst locals. It is the, what did I say, fourth leading cause. Sorry, fifth leading cause of death among non-residents. And nobody's safe. Everybody across the board. I do have some other stats though. But basically, 97% of all the suicides from 2012 to 2016, which there were 200 of them um, per year, essentially, 97% were over 18. So there were 3% under 18. But almost 80%, 78% were male. So we're only talking 22% female. 98% of them were Hawaii residents. So it's overwhelmingly residential. It's overwhel overwhelmingly local. And half of them did it by hanging or suffocation. The other half by firearms, drug overdose, and jumping. So 10% were jumping. Think about that. 10%. That's 20 jumpers a year. Every year from 2012 to 2016. 20 jumpers. Half of them, 50%, did hanging or suffocation. 22% used guns. And 10%, just as many as there were jumpers, used drugs and killed themselves with drugs. Intentional overdoses. 5%, only 5% of suicides were from the homeless population. 95% were not homeless. Only 33% of them had alcohol in their system. And only 21% of them had enough alcohol to be considered legally drunk, like above 0.08. Only 18% had marijuana, 17% had opiates, 15% had meth, 2% had cocaine. So 42% of all of them had some drug in their system. I have a couple charts that you can check out. You, you'll be able to see it on my website, on dougkarenik.com if you wanna go over there. I posted pictures of some of these charts. But if we're talking about the fatal injuries in Hawaii by residential age, age group, suicide was number one between 15 and 29 year olds number one between 30 and 44 year olds number one between 60 and 74 year olds number one total across the state 3552 cases from 2012 to 2016. that's crazy that is crazy so of the 3,552 fatal injuries over that four-year period, 887 of them were by suicide. 673 were by falls. 620 were by poisoning. That's crazy. 242 by MVC, motor vehicle collision, and only 181 from drowning. That poisoning one is interesting. And it's 65% of all violent death in Hawaii is suicide. 12% is homicide. 
and 22% is undetermined. So we don't know if it was intentional or not. So you can pretty sure, and based on my, on my opinion, you can go ahead and add that 22% to that 65% if they can't determine it. Split it down the middle, how about that? Add 11, so 65 and 11. 76. 76% of violent deaths or suicide in Hawaii. 80% in Honolulu. That's crazy. It's actually really sad. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that people just don't talk about it because they don't know how bad it is. We really don't. We don't hear about it enough. I'm sure if there was some way to let the locals know what was happening without making it public so that tourism was hurt or there wasn't copycat crimes, then we could do something about it. But they haven't figured that out yet. The fact that that many people die from suicide every year and that nobody knows it. It's really, it's shocking actually. It's shocking to me. If you know somebody if you've experienced suicide by someone that you were close with, leave me a broken heart in the chat so I can see how many of you have experienced suicide by someone in your family or one of your friends. Go ahead and give me a broken heart in the chat. What's up, Nans? Yeah, this one is sad. Hale, Kiyoki22, what's up, bro? Sarah Bowman, thank you for coming. JR says, this isn't new either. I was a teen in the late 90s. I had at least eight friends who completed suicide by the time I was 25. That's crazy, dude. That's sad. Candy Girl, what's up, Candy Girl? Roy Smith, Aloha, why doesn't this have more subs? <laughs> thank you. B classic. How much murders do you think is staged as suicide? I bet you there's a couple. I bet you there's a couple. But then again, I don't know if you guys know this, and I'm sure you guys do, but there's probably some of you that don't know that assisted suicide was made legal in Hawaii. There's some stipulations, of course, as to like how many doctors have to understand your wishes to want to not live any any longer and then there's like a prescription process and there's time that has to pass so that happens as well sandy says my dear friend killed himself breaks my heart please reach out to everyone and make sure they're okay his death never made it to the news you are right deaths never make it on the news bonnie and clyde 808 says how's it dougie hey what's up thanks for coming through i appreciate you Stan and the talk. Stan from Kona. How's it? Mahalo for the update. Thank you, Stan. Appreciate you coming out. Johnny Walker. When I was growing up in Lahaina, Maui, there was a bunch of suicides all within a few months of each other. The majority were young male and Filipino. One with a gun and the rest hung themselves. Yep. Kamu Ella says, since I moved from Kona in 2008, 22 friends and family members have committed suicide back on Big Island. My best friend and two of my closest cousins. That's sad, man. I'm sorry. That's sad. Nalo to Lanai. Even us here on Lanai, the smallest of all islands, have seen our share of suicide. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's crazy to think, yeah, that a place like Lanai would, have, would see suicide. 
John Robinson said, blows my mind, the act, but I almost did it nonetheless. Runs in my family. Jesus is the only answer. John Robinson, it does run in the family, you know, I've noticed. And I think that it has something to do with the suggest, the suggestibility of someone in your bloodline having done it. And that's along the same lines as that... Um, why they don't want copycat crime. You know what I mean? They don't want copycat suicides. Basically along the same line. T.O. says, any data for socioeconomic demographic? I don't have any on the socioeconomic demographics of the suicide. I did look, I couldn't find any. That's the thing that bugged me when I was looking through this process is I couldn't find enough data. There's just not enough data on suicide in Hawaii, which is important to me because Hawaii can't rely on data from the rest of the country. It just can't. It's a different world. It might as well be a different planet. Different issues, different communication, different community, different pressures. When, when you're going to pay a million dollars for a two-bedroom, single-wall construction house in Kulio'o, that's a piece of junk. Literally, the house next to me, the fridge was in the living room because it didn't fit in the kitchen. In a single wall construction, you could hear everything. It's just a piece of T-111 siding between the walls. All rotted out termites. And it went up for sale for 820. And the day before it hit the market, someone put in a million dollar offer with a hundred thousand dollar concession. And I'm like, yo, when you can't afford to live in a place, and the only place you can afford to live in is like surrounded by tons of people, no parking, all these rules, Lo got to load the elevator certain times, got to pay for laundry, got to go to that sketchy laundromat down the street. Only major cities have to deal with that kind of stuff. So you can't use the same stats and you definitely can't find the same solutions off of those stats. So it's important that we have stats in Hawaii. That's why I just don't understand. Candice Kumala, my brother committed suicide. I'm sorry, Candice. That's sad. Wendy W. said, Japan men, a lot. Yeah, um, most of the suicides that I remember in Waikiki were Japanese men. There were Japanese women too, though. I remember a guy jumped and landed on the fencing in front of the hotel, you know, like picket fence, like a iron picket fence and he's stuck on the fence and it's messy and it's gross and it's like traumatizing for everybody around it hits the ground and it goes everywhere it's like a bomb went off it sounds a lot like that it sounds like if you throw a big cinder block in a dumpster if you throw a cinder block in an empty dumpster that big boom and rattle that's how it feels that's how it sounds it's so weird John Robinson, sorry to hear about your brother, man. 1970. Shauna, what's up, Shauna? Thanks for coming through. It's a, it's, a, it's a touchy one today, a deep one today, guys. Condolences to all you who've experienced suicide. Dougie rocking the mullet. Yes, sir. Uh... Wow, Candace. He jumped off a mountain in Waianae. That's crazy. Man. Chidan said, Honoka'a. They was working on a house, saw him hanging off a tree from the window. So sad.
Johnny Walker said, I don't get why people end themselves and take the kids with them. I know it's crazy, but culturally, like, it's to try to spare them. The shame. Chris Russell, you a good brother. Thanks for the info on all these cases. Blessings to you and your family. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for the words, man. Mahalos for being here. Oh, 13 years old, Candace. Sonny Garcia was a big proponent against suicides, and he ended up hanging himself a few years ago. He survived in prayers for his recovery. Yeah, everybody remembers that. So suicide is a problem with belief. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people do it just to ease the pain, ease the suffering, yeah? It's hard for somebody who doesn't understand, like me, who doesn't understand the pain, doesn't understand when life is so painful you want it to be over. It's hard for people like me, which I met, there's a lot of you in the chat that are just like me. We just don't understand. It doesn't make sense. But, man, for someone to choose to end it because it's so bad, it's got to be horrible. Elite Selly Toy says, I would have thought amongst locals it would have been meth. Yeah, meth was fourth. It was the fourth, fourth most popular cause of suicide or mechanism of suicide. Johnny Walker said, my boy broke up with his chick. She broke into his Waikiki condo, hung herself from his balcony. He came home and seen the first responders and her hang. That's, that's crazy. I've seen that before. Wow, Le, Le said that her daughter was 16 and ran away and left a suicide note and it broke her heart, but she's 24 now and well. Thank God, Le, that you can look back on that. Now, B Classic has a good point. The question is how much suicides come from meth addiction issues. Well, we do know that a major cause of mental illness in Hawaii is due to crystal methamphetamine use. And we do know that one of the leading symptoms or effects of crystal methamphetamine use is depression, mood swings, and mental illness. So I bet you it's huge. And that's why I think it'd be important for us to actually have those demographics and those stats with those breakdowns. Todd Yukutake said, there's about 250 people that commit suicide a year. A lot of people I talk to can't believe there's that many cases and it's not in the news. I know. Nan says, I know this kid was suicidal. He, his friend tried to stop him. The kid fell with him and the friend died. He survived. Oh, that's a mind trip. That's a trip. You go to kill yourself. Your friend tries to stop you. He falls. A good policeman, um, I'll say his first name was Joey. He taught me a lot in my police career. And uh, he saved a guy once who was full of blood, cut himself all up, bleeding all over the place, had, a, had HIV. So we had to take universal precautions and tried to jump off the balcony and he held on to him. It was like a fire escape out of a, wind, a building. And he saved him from jumping. And then one officer that I knew, his name was John, I won't say his last name. Good officer I learned a lot from when I was in um, SED. And he, he saved a dude from jumping off the balcony. And like dude was jumping and he grabbed him and risked going over with him. It's a trip. MJ said, I've always wondered why not a lot of homeless commit suicide. It's, it's weird, yeah? I, um, you, I guess you would think, but I think it has to do with the dichotomy of like they're used to being in tough situations. So when bad things happen, it's like, okay, here's another bad thing that happened. It's the fifth thing today where I do feel like there is something to it with the swing, the difference between what your normal life is and what it can swing to. And if people get used to thinking life is like this and they get comfortable and complacent. And then when things swing, 
they can't handle the swing. You know what I mean? And I don't know, I'm not a psychologist, but it does seem like homeless people who are already living a rougher life than you can probably handle a lot more than you. You know what I mean? I don't know. B Classic said, most times when it's when the drugs first come out of your system when you're the most emotional and in danger of suicide though. Yeah, you're right. You're right, it's when the drugs wear off and that dopamine regulates and the cortisol comes back and your brain starts to change. It's weird because it's like that hit will save you. Talk about a mind trip. That's why meth rewires the brain. And eventually you start needing that meth so you don't go into that swing, that depressive swing. Nan said, my sister is undetermined death too, yep. I remember you talking about that. By comparison, it's a small percentage compared to attempted suicide. Elite Sally Toy said, yep. 30 people commit suicide for every successful one in Hawaii. Tio said, poisoning, Miski's pesticides or Monsanto's pesticides. I'm not sure what that is, but it said accidental poisoning. And it's like above drowning. It goes drowning, accidental poisoning, and then meth. On the bottom, when you're talking from the bottom up. The last one is drowning. And then it's accidental poisoning. Randy Kalani Ariola said, a guy I knew tried seeking help from the hospital. I don't know what kind of advice or information he got, but same day he killed himself. Sometimes you cannot, and sometimes they're packed and slammed. They got too much going on, and sometimes the advice doesn't do it. Tio said, military statistics, I bet higher. You're right, um, and I actually have those. So I'll give you one stat. Some 498 troops troops died by suicide in the U.S. in 2019, bringing the rate among active duty troops to 25.9 per 100,000. That's almost, that's one in 400. That's one in 400 troops. Brokeheart Wolf, thanks for coming out. Law enforcement's another one. I know three policemen who killed themselves. And I know that my, my first motorman ever in 2012, when I pushed out of Fourth Watch, I went to District 1, which is the town district. And I got assigned to Sector 2. Glenn Valoria was my sergeant. He was a good dude. And my first day on the beat, I pull up. I don't know what I'm doing. I pull up to Prospect. It was second watch, so I worked daytime, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we had to do tow zones on Prospect because of the schools. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I'll never forget, this dude pulls up next to me in a white car. I'm driving a white car. He's driving a white car. But he kind of acted like a motorman. He was small, kind of lazy, but he was such a good dude. His name was Kyle Surimori. And Kyle came up to me and he gave me like these templates and he gave me all these like supplementals that would help me with my job. He was such a good dude. I mean, a good dude. Always friendly, 
wanted to be accepting. He complained a lot. Um, but I think that he was just, I'll never forget him. He was the first person that was super nice to me on the beat in my first day on the watch. They all ended up being really, really cool to me. But he was the first one, so I won't forget him. And he killed himself. About three years later, four years later, he killed himself. He put a gun in his mouth. He was, uh, he had just gone up to CID to be a detective. And it's, it was miserable up there for him. He was getting, he was new, so he was, he was FNG. He was the doo-doo boy. And he was the good And um, he wanted to leave. And he kept trying to request to, to go somewhere else. And he never got that request. And for whatever reason, he went home and killed himself on his front porch. And then I've known a few of them. We talked about them on my last couple videos. BBHK Valdez says, Aloha, Doug, and everybody. Fascinating topic. My sister-in-law's mother shot herself and my coworker overdose on pills. Yeah. A lot of broken hearts in the chat. The classic said, my adopted daughter's birth mom's hung herself, so we adopted her. Good dude. Reno says, you already know, bro. I sure do, man. My heart goes out to you. YouTuber 808, my cousin in 2001, 29 years old. John Robbins said, it's a two of my brothers and a cousin. Dylan Duarte said, my mother, man, that's hard. Tater Monkey said she tried when she was 14. And her husband's brother committed suicide. Dang, Elite Selly Toy said, I know a family in Kaimuki who had three cousins go over the same overpass. What? Yeah, um, there's a boy, I won't, I won't name names, but there is a boy that jumped off over the overpass right near Foster Botanical Gardens, you know that overpass? and up by Queen Emma, and he was 17. A lot of people in Hawaii, I do notice, we get jumpers on the overpasses. Just during the pandemic, Tater Monkey knows 10 families who had to bury their loved ones. Man, that's sad. Johnny Walker said, I attempted suicide, popped a bunch of pills. I was constantly bullied as a kid for being fat and holly. Never wanted to die. I did it more for the attention. In a weird way, it made me stronger. Wow. That's crazy, man. Well, I'm glad you made it, Johnny. It's crazy life, huh? Mm. 
little funky chick says a lot guys dad took me visit graves every memorial day so many times i made a comment on my great grandparents dad while they died on the same day years later told me it was a murder suicide yeah we just had a murder suicide you guys remember in waikiki right at the end of waikiki at the end of um kalakaua Nan says, no, my sis' death was unattended. Wailua Falls. Doug Karenik, can you tell us the difference between the medical examiner and the coroner? You know, the medical examiner and the coroner um, is like state to state, it's different. In Michigan, we have the medical examiner, but in Tennessee, we have a coroner. There's a coroner. So it's usually the office of the medical examiner or the officer of the coroner. Um, and then sometimes the coroner is a medical examiner and it's an elected position. So it depends on which state you go to, but we have ME in Hawaii. The medical examiner is the office that responds to bodies when you find a body, which we've been to tons of bodies. As a policeman, that's one of the jobs you hate the most is when you have an unattended. Actually, when you say unattended, like it comes with, a, there's a lot, there's like a rush of emotion that comes with when you say unattended. Because as a policeman, like, if someone says, how was your week? Or if someone says, how was your day? If one of your beat partners is like, yo, how, how was today? It's like, ah, oh, I'm freaking unattended in Kaimuki. You know what that means. It usually means stinky, gross. You know what I mean? Like lots of looking at dead body. Um, it's usually really gross. Little Funky Chip said, I looked it up in the newspaper. They buried at the graveyard in Kapalama across the Kamehameha School's bus pickup. The old graveyard, lots of history there. Sheila Gage, I know quite a few people who lost loved ones to suicide. Some of them knew each other and all went, to the, all went the same way, close together. One guy lived and never speaks about it. Wow. Tridan says... Hey, Doug, how do, you, how do I find Honolulu Homicide if it's out of print right now or everywhere? Um, you know, I don't know, but some, there are people on my Patreon. If you guys can, um, if you guys know where to find it, I know that um, Kelsey found the online version of Honolulu Homicide. So you can find the online version. It might cost you like 13 bucks or something, maybe even 20. But you can find the online version if you can't find the paperback. Chris Russell, Japan, the suicide forest, crazy. I think there was an old couple jump off the H3 or pulley a couple years ago, yeah. I think you're talking about the Aoki Gahara. Dang, Tridan says 100 bucks on eBay? Scratch that. Yeah, don't do that. CJB808, me and the mullet, Doug. Thanks, CJ. JR says, meth also caused psychosis from lack of sleep. You're right about that. And prolonged psychosis has like a long-lasting effect on mental health. Sandy said she took a full bottle of Tylenol when she was getting bullied in high school. That's a big one. I think bullying is a big one in school for young kids that don't know how to handle that, don't know how to cope. Monica Peterson, hit the like, y'all. Thank you, Monica. Bryson Akana, Doug Doug, my bro. I have acquaintance who was running hard and was up to no good and was in too deep. He committed suicide, supposedly. My question, have you suspected scenario? 
Man, you never know. That's the other thing, guys. Think about it. When you're doing drugs and you do an overdose of drugs, like how can you tell if you're a drug user, right? And someone who does drugs with you wants to kill you they, and you're slamming ice together. You know what I mean? They can just shoot it too much or fentanyl or whatever. And it's just an accidental overdose. Like that's an easy one. The drug scene's an easy one to cover up. You know what I mean? Uh, Johnny Walker says, my Hanai uncle was a law enforcement officer living with us in Lahaina, and he got into it with my brother, pulled his gun, pointed at my bro, and then shot himself in the head. He had target rounds, and he lived because of that. No way. Whew. Yeah, mental health. Bro, that's crazy. That's the thing. Like, It was hard being off-island Holly f and being a police officer because I didn't know the streets. I didn't know my way around Honolulu. I didn't know like the culture and I remember thinking how come dudes in my class like even in my recruit class had dramas at home like had two guys get kicked out of academy just because drama with their significant other and got you know had arguments had a big blow up or whatever and then they claimed that they hit them or whatever so they both got removed from the class. And I remember thinking, how is there that kind of drama? But for me, I didn't have family here. So it was me, my wife, and my one-year-old when we moved. So it was easy to maintain when it's, when it's all you guys got, or you three. You know what I mean? And we're trying... When I started Academy, my take-home pay was twelve twenty-two. I made twelve twenty-two every two weeks take-home when I started Academy. So... 14.44 a month. I'm sorry, 24.44 a month. And I was paying 1,700 a month for rent. So like you're $700 after that. Gas, food, diapers. And all we had was each other. So we never have drama. Like I needed hugs and kisses when I got home. I needed to play with my baby. I needed to spend time with my wife. That's how I kept sane. So I never had the drama. But as time went on and I start seeing like, oh, Hawaii is so different because so many people will live in the same home. And then even if they don't live in the same home, it'll be the same neighborhood. Or they're always surrounded by family. Family's not too far away. And I found that family was the most drama. Um, and so I saw it a lot. I did see a lot. Then added stress of being a, a policeman, especially you weren't a policeman. They knew you before you were a policeman. All of a sudden, you're a policeman. Everything changes for you. What you can, what you cannot do. And it's definitely a lot of stress. Island Hawaii says, relationships play a major role. You're right. Yeah, and then uh, CJB808 said, remind me of Matthew Higa. The guy that threw the kid off the overpass, yeah. Yeah, man, that was sad. We talked about that in my Patreon. He was on ice. And we all know what happened there. Cyrus Belt. That was a sad, that was a sad one. Sheila Gage says, I heard on the basis it's at least once a month. It probably is.
Nans says five bucks on Apple Books. There you go. Good looking out, Nans. There you go, Chidan. Wow, Brokar Wolf said my biological mother was a cutter but passed in a natural death. Wow, that's a trip. Why Swizzle said the ME in Honolulu accidentally lost his dad's body. Later found it, mistaken identity. Wow, that's a trip. My father worked at the H3 tunnel, said people would park their car on, on the Conway side right after the tunnel would jump because it's a nice scenic place. Yeah, plenty of people from um, the Pulley as well. I don't know if you guys remember, I just did, if you look back on my Instagram posts and some of my YouTube posts, you'll see that we are on chapter 10 of Honolulu Homicide, Gary Diaz's book. I believe it was chapter 10. Um, we went over Ji Zhao Li. And Ji Zhao Li was a little girl who went missing selling Zippy's tickets out in front of the 7-Eleven at Kuakini in Nu'uanu. And I believe right out of Kuananakoa Park. And she went missing. She got abducted and taken and, and was never seen again. But they searched for her like every week for like six or seven weeks after that. They got hundreds of people all over the island to try to search the island. And when they were searching the area around the pulley, they were finding other bodies. Just like the Brian Laundry case, they were finding other bodies when they were looking for Brian, Brian Laundry's body and um, Gabby Petito. And while they were searching for Jizal Li, they found a jumper who was from Maine who had jumped 400 feet off the pulley. They found him at the bottom of the ravine. So people jump the H3 and pulley in that area all the time because of the height and the H2. For sure. Dylan Duarte, my firefighter buddy, said they recently went to a call where someone hanged themselves from a tree in plain sight at Alamona Park. It was like 5 a.m. Dang. Yeah. You know what? There's not that many people there at 5 because it's illegal to be in the park. So not many people would have seen them. All it takes is 10 minutes of hanging. Island Hawaii says three guys shot up heroin, two died, and the, the guy who shot up the other two survived. Can the one who shot up the drug be charged with negligence? Um, no. I don't think so. He was ripping people off who may have pissed him off. He did. Later he was found hanging, leaving out details that I heard because, I don't know, suicide or something else. Yeah, that junk happens all the time. Johnny Walker said, Maui PD classified as a negligent discharge. It was swept under the rug. Really messed up my brother after seeing that. I do know of a policeman that was being stupid, was drunk one night, was being stupid with his buddies and put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger, but didn't. He thought there wasn't one in the chamber. I don't know what he was thinking, but it wasn't. He didn't do that junk on purpose, but that was just him being drunk and killed himself. Benson said, sometimes I think about killing myself, but I got a wife and kids, so I can't do that. You're right, Benson. Life's bigger than that. We got people now that count on us. We got babies and a wife. And think about the damage, yeah, that it'll do to them. That brings me to my next point. There are top 10 warning signs. This was given out by a report done in Hawaii on suicide. I'm just going to mention a couple of these before I let you guys go. Number one, depression. Depression is a huge risk. Of suicide. If you know anybody who's struggling with depression, they got to get help. They got to get help because depression, you, also, you oftentimes can't be pulled out of a depression by somebody or by yourself. There's usually something that's wrong. You need someone to be with you to endure. You need to be able to get through it. Sometimes it's like waiting for it to pass. And so 
depression is such a strong indicator and there's such a risk of suicide with depression. Alcohol and substance abuse. You know anybody who's addicted to alcohol or addicted to drugs, they're at high risk of suicide, especially if it's recent and it's like a recent change in their behavior. Strained relationships, number three. Parents, boyfriend, girlfriend. Number four, ideation, thoughts of dying, taking a life, expressing this and writing school papers. That's the fourth most common warning signs of a depression. So when you see these things, let people know that sometimes they just need to hear it. Sometimes they just need to hear it to get over that hump that minute, that hour, or that day. That you love them and that you're there for them and you can get through this. Attempts. So if they've been self-mutilating, cutting, medicating, poisoning themselves, those are indicators. Number six, school irregularities, poor grades, not turning in work or turning in work late, lateness to school, especially if it comes off, comes all of a sudden, something's going on. Threats of taking one's life or verbalizing life not worth living. Number eight, giving away prized possessions. If you see someone giving away their prized possessions, they've been showing up late to work or they quit their job, they start doing bad in school, these are red flags. Stockpiling pills, firearms, that's a risk. That is, that is definitely an indicator. Something's changing. Feelings of hopelessness or helplessness. If you guys know anybody who's going through that, they are at risk. So I encourage you to reach out to them, encourage them to get help. I'm going to leave some links in the chat. That's for youth and young adults. 1-800-273-TALK. And then remember, 498 troops died by suicide in the U.S. in 2019. So this next link that I'm putting here in the chat is for veterans. If you know a veteran, sometimes it takes a veteran to talk to a veteran. The guy who lives behind my house, good dude. He just gave me a tire for doing tire flips in my backyard. Those things cost hundreds of dollars. Just a solid dude. He was a veteran and uh, went through a lot. And he was talking to me about his downward spiral of um, alcohol abuse and how his girl, his wife, his fiance, um, really helped him get through it. He can look back and see that. Some people don't have someone like that. They need you to give them a call, a shout out. One of my greatest friends in the world is a veteran. And um, I try to be there for him when I can. Think about him on holidays. Those people need to hear from you. Also, I'm going to leave this one here. This is the Hawaii Poison Hotline. I called this number a lot when I was on the beat um, when I needed identifying drugs. So when I found somebody doing drugs and I knew they were doing certain pills or whatever, I would call the poison control and have a poison control tell me what pills I had because they have like identifying markings. But if you know somebody or if you are dealing with um, poison, if you attempted or you know someone who attempted and you, they were found before they died or um, it was an unsuccessful attempt, but they still need poison control um, to identify what happened so they can get help, um, call that number right there, Hawaii Poison Hotline. If you find drugs that you want to identify, that's the number that you can use. And I'm going to leave some links here in the chat just for you guys to see the references that I used for this video. There's a couple of cool articles that you can read if you're interested. One by Civil Beat, one by Suicide Info. And then there's even that case, that Kahala case. That suicide. I think it was a soldier, yeah? A sailor?
All right, so I appreciate you guys for coming out. Thank you so much for spending your Friday night with me. Uh, I know this is a heavy topic. They're not always this heavy, but I think it was important. Just know that if you are dealing with suicidal thoughts or depression, that you are loved and that you are needed and this world can use you and this world um, needs you and we want you here. So click on one of those links if you need um, help or you need somebody to talk to um, and you can always reach out to me. You can DM me on all of my social media. If you just want to get something off your chest, you just want to talk, go ahead and do that. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok, and here on YouTube. It's all at Doug Karenik. So thank you guys. I appreciate all my patrons for always coming through and propping me up. Um, you guys are like pillars in my YouTube community, and I appreciate you for always being there. Island Hawaii, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much for the generosity. I appreciate you and I appreciate your kind words. Um, if you have something that you wanna say, you go ahead and leave it in the comments. The, co the chat will close soon, but the comments will, be re will remain open for the video. And um, I read those comments. So if you got something you can add, um, or if you have a video that you want me to cover, you want me to talk about as it relates to Hawaii, go ahead and send it in the DMs or you can, you can um, leave it in the comment section here. I will leave my links and references in the description. Um, thank you guys so much. You guys are the best. And I'm going to do another video tomorrow night. So stay tuned. And until the next time, aloha.